Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. In this video, I go through the Persistent Universe monthly report, letting you know exactly what is going on where. So, I have already covered the Squadron 42 monthly report. I have linked that in the description below, so you can go check that out if you haven't already. Today, we will cover the Persistent Universe report. There's a lot to go through, so I suggest grabbing a drink, maybe even a snack, sitting back and putting your feet up. So, kicking off with AI... They have improved the cover generation, which involved voxelizing the area around cover locators for AI to better understand which locations have clearance and adequate protection. The shotgun behaviors and tactics were implemented. New shotgun wielding AI will find more advantageous positions when shooting. NPCs will have the ability to change between locomotion speeds while using a single path. So an NPC could relocate to new cover, moving slowly and shooting at first just to kind of give himself some cover fire before turning and running away. Ship AI finalized the last implementation of the new 3D navigation system. The goal being AI pilots are fully aware of their physical environments. In space, they'll navigate around asteroids, comma rays and space stations, for example, while when they're close to planets, they'll need to be aware of the surface, the terrain elevation, physical structures, and even things like rocks and so forth. This actually is, I think, coming in 3.9 is this navigation ability. I'm not sure whether we'll see AI flying around in 3.9. It would be very cool to see them going about their own business, fleshing out that universe a little bit more. They've also dedicated some time to routine code cleanup, which is crucial to keeping the ever-growing code base efficient and readable. And finally, Ship AI prototyped a new AI system, which is the tactical target selection. They say with missions getting more sophisticated, they need something to fulfill all requested scenarios. So, moving on to environment art. They're finalizing Microtech's moons and updating their geology assets. The moons, they say, will be some of the harshest environments in Stanton and will offer a high-risk reward opportunity for players daring enough to tackle them. Uh, they also say with the recent Planet Tech improvements, they wanted to create something more dynamic that better integrates with the various surfaces and biomes. Now, I'm really looking forward to getting this last set of Stanton's moons, exploring them, showing them off. Doesn't sound like it'll be all that easy, uh, as obviously 3.9, the player status effects like temperature, will probably make it a little more challenging to show off the actual moons. Also, I'm unsure what they mean by dynamic. Does this mean that there will be some animated environments in some way? Do let me know what you think. Either way, it is the final set of moons for the Stanton system, which is great news. Now, for ship art, they have finalised art for the Esperia Prowler. And once the Cutlass Red was released, they moved on to the white box of the Cutlass Blue. The UK Tech started production on two new ships, which they say they will announce later this year. Could this be what we voted on at CitizenCon? I think one of them was a refinery ship. The Anvil Carrack is nearing completion with final touches being added to the medical bay, the cartography room and the cargo pods. They are currently tweaking the lighting and making a final polish pass. Now for weapon art, they have kicked off two new FPS weapon types, the Lightning Bolt Co. Atskav Sniper Rifle and the Uberev Pistol. A new anti-personnel turret archetype was started this month. These will initially be used as deterrents in prisons, but eventually they'll crop up in other areas of the PU as well. Uh, hopefully this is what they'll probably bring in when they remove armistice zone, so allowing people to draw their weapon wherever they like, having a turret that will take someone down for that reason, as well as AI eventually that will stop people from shooting in, in populated areas, but turrets sound like a good starting point. For audio, they've begun composing music for prisons, They've worked on new weapon and tail sounds for the Prowler and recorded dialogue and vocals for the actor status system. Now that sounds quite interesting. Maybe your character will groan when he's hungry or maybe you'll hear him clattering his teeth because he's shivering because of the cold. This, I believe, would be a much better way for the player to know the character's situation rather than just lots of UI dotted around the screen. For the back end, they've finished the advanced querying system for the iCache and defined optimal ways of working with the game server and Starhash services. Changes were also made to the HUD server, which will optimize the service to client traffic path 
Additionally, they supported the account reset tool, which is actually available now. This is kind of a hard reset for your character. So if you have a detrimental bug and things are really not working for you, you can literally just completely hard reset your character, which is very good uh, for that reason. But also, I think it might have been brought in as a necessity when they stop wiping the servers all the time for each patch. Giving us the option to do it when we want is a much better way, I think. Uh, finally, for backend, the wallet changes and the ongoing development for long-term persistence is still underway. For characters, they have textured two outfits for Microtech and wrapping up the tech implementation for two more with the focus on cold weather theming and variation as obviously Microtech is cold. Plus, they are finalizing the implementation of the Caldera suit, which we saw at CitizenCon. I personally cannot wait for temperatures to affect the player having to choose the correct armor or clothing just to go to an environment I think is going to be so much better. And then when they bring in the uh, player inventories, the physicalized inventories, it's really going to make a big difference. And it's going to feel a lot different in game as well. Because at the moment we can just go wherever we please without any real punishment. Uh, for design, they are setting up new shops coming in Alpha 3.9. They also said high level design work has begun around event driven content. They said more could be said, but it'll be worth the wait. No idea what they're talking about. I'd love to know what your thoughts are here. The engineering team continues with the physics, threading and performance improvements. They've implemented concurrent and immediate queuing for physics. The signed distance field system was further developed to accelerate collision checks on complex geometry and increase precision. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how shields will work with this as well as I think they are using it for atmospheric entry as well. So you can see it literally on the area of the ship that needs it rather than just a static effect. Support was also given to NPC death reaction animations and engineering also did a lot of work for Vulcan and Gen 12 renderer and worked further on ground fog. For gameplay features, they provided support for the upcoming prison mission feature. They're adding functionality for multiple cargo manifests per ship that will allow for more variety when collecting cargo from NPCs. Now, I'm not sure exactly what this means. It sounds like it could do with some of the leaked missions informations that we've heard about. I won't say anything in case people don't want to hear the leaks, but it might be interesting being able to see what you have on board your ship, probably using the new building blocks UI rather than waiting until you get to a panel at a space station or a landing zone. They're also converting the shop UI system to the new building blocks tech, which will be a multi-quarter initiative throughout 2020. So obviously UI is everywhere in the game. It is now become legacy UI. So they need to go through every single piece of UI and change it to the new building blocks, which is going to take a while. For the vehicle feature team, they're improving the radar and ping detection, including simplifying entity detection. They're reworking the AR market display and allowing low signature entities. They've also implemented vehicle to vehicle loadout spawning, which will enable us to store uh, and spawn ships within cargo bays of other ships. Now, this is great news, and it does mean that we will be able to spawn vehicles like the Earth Rover inside the Constellation Aquila without having to land at an outpost. Now, this will be very useful for the Karak because in order to get the rover and the Pisces in the ship, you're going to have to land and go to space station. So clearly they thought, let's get it in. Let's make the Karak uh, as good as it can be. Uh, they've also worked on sub-targeting improvements to allow players to specifically target weapons or turrets after fully scanning vehicles. Now, it's great hearing this. This kind of opens up a multi-crew spot, hopefully. I don't know if it'll just be, it'll probably just be the pilot to start with but where you could have a scanning station being able to fully scan something in order to distinguish where the weapons and where the turrets are and then allow your team to focus or delegate maybe a particular turret or a particular weapon that's doing a lot of damage. This will also play into the time to disable, which I'm so excited for as well. Uh, finally, the vehicle feature team have been continuing the work on the signed distance field shields, which will improve hit detection and effects, including extending shield gameplay to non-vehicle entities. Now for graphics, with Planet Tech version 4 complete, the team began looking into improving the organic shader to enable it to take advantage of physically based rendering. This will allow for a much wider reuse of assets uh, as they will automatically adapt to the local biome, so rock colour surface textures, snow and sand buildup. Now this will be very interesting for environments. Clothes, buildings, ships and so forth will eventually over time 
have a build-up of whatever it is around there, be it snow or microtech or sand on Daymar, for example, and it's just going to make things look really cool. For level design, New Babbage is almost complete with only a few additions and final polish to come. The team continue to work on the modular space stations, the current stations in game, they're known as tier zero. Uh, next up, more structures and easily navigable layouts will be created along with procedural signage and future additions. I just think having a you are here map inside would be most useful at certain points where you can sort of see exactly where you are in the area. Um, but also getting your localized map, I think, would be beneficial because I'd still get lost in a lot of these space stations. Player relations say they are just focusing on stabilizing the Alpha 3.8.2 patch. No idea when this is coming. Uh, we're on the 10th of February now, uh, probably 11th by the time this video comes out. So it's got to be sometime soon, surely. The props team spent time cleaning up some bugs and taking stock of materials and textures in an ongoing process to improve asset quality. Work continued on prison props with the oxygen and ore machinery finalized. We saw this in Inside Star Citizen quite recently. And a boxing ring was completed that will allow for some much needed entertainment while the inmates serve their time. Hopefully we'll be able to have boxing rings in other places, but I do still think cargo bays of the Constellation or the Reclaimer will be great for holding boxing events. Now they also said that there were small stashes hidden in the prisons so players inside could keep an eye out for extra supplies. They also spent some time focused on high-tech dressing for new Babbage like a bar and furniture sets and dressing for the many food outlets. Finally they started on new food assets required for the player status feature so very soon we'll get to eat. I think so far we've seen noodle bars, hot dogs, pizzas. I'm not sure what else they'll bring in. Apples, I think was another one. In fact, there's an image for apples. There you go. Uh, system design. The team finished off mining consumables. Now, these will be used by players to make mining jobs easier or maybe correct mistakes made in the process. Now, these are single shot items that may reduce the resistance of something or, you know, stop it exploding. Work on volatile cargo has progressed as well. Uh, when extracted, it will need to be taken to a refining kiosk quickly and carefully to prevent it detonating inside the ship. Now, I do wonder if this has anything to do with the new quantum fuel containium, I think it's called. And also, refining kiosks. Are these coming in 3.9? Are we going to be able to refine ores instead of selling them in their raw state? Maybe getting more money? So many questions for this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. A resource distribution is another significant feature currently under development which will create a unified way of handling resources. Now this means power, heat, shields, CPU and so on inside a ship, station or planetary settlement. Now they say the aim here is to make the engineering role critical to large ships and to allow attackers to take out or even sabotage components. Super exciting here in this. And it is the starting point of the engineering mechanic. Having components make a real difference and interact with each other, which will allow players to change or alter whether to aid in some way or sabotage your ship will be great fun. Also, I love how it mentions stations or planetary settlements, meaning that outposts, derelict space stations, each requiring maybe power to get the lights on or gravity so you can walk around in it. So excited to get the engineering mechanic in. It'll just make our ships feel so much more personal and alive, really. Now, UI are focused on high-tech environmental screens for new Babbage and developing the visual style for the prison UI screen, which will have a more retro-inspired functional look. The final polish was given to the actor status system, the visuals for the personal inner thought made progress as well, and the pop-up radial menu, which lets players perform quick actions, such as turning on a torch without remembering the key bindings has been worked on. I'm hoping in 3.9, when this radial menu comes in, we'll be able to maybe remove our helmet and place it under our arm. I also expect it will be helpful for potentially eating and drinking if, you've, if you're carrying food with you. Plus, allowing you to do emotes on the fly without having to go into the chat and type it. So it should be a lot more immersive and hopefully a little more instinctive as well. The UI tech started work on 3D building blocks, which will support multi-layered screens and make it easier to add 3D icons. This probably applies to MISC a lot with their 3D HUDs. Uh, they also expanded reusability and restyling, which will help implement the new vehicle UI. So finally, for visual effects, 
The team further improved Planet Tech version 4, specifically wind strength values across each location. This includes a new option to clamp a maximum wind speed for each planet, which will allow the team to use fewer wind textures rather than a bespoke asset per location. Currently, they are adding effects to several new locations in the Stanton system. Work continues on effects for new Babbage, mining attachments, the Cutlass Red and the Karak, and they also began looking into atmospheric entry, as I've mentioned before, using the sign distance field text, which is used for shields, it'll be used for planetary entries, it'll also be used for potentially atmospheric flights as well. So many benefits to this tech, it's incredible. But anyway, it's been a great month by the sounds of things, albeit behind closed doors, uh, but it's very exciting, some of the features that are being worked on and many of them come in pretty soon, like the player interactions, components, prisons, the new UI, the signed distance field, not to mention things like the physicalized damage system. There's a lot of impressive tech coming, hopefully this year, which will make the game feel more like a AAA game that it claims to be. And I'm really excited to see what the PU looks like at the end of this year. Hopefully, with the improvements to the server and the client and the latency, it'll feel more like a game. Uh, anyway, that is it for the monthly report. Do let me know what you're excited for and be sure to hit subscribe for more Star Citizen content. Tick the notification bell so you know exactly when my videos go live. And if you did enjoy the video, hit the like button as it really helps me out. Also, follow me over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. Come and hang out with us where we'll discuss the game, we'll play other games and just chill out. Big thank you to my patrons and channel members for your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.